Hello, my name's Mike M0 MSN, and today we're going to have a look at how to set up the Kenwood 590 as a slave to the Kenwood 890, um, so that you can work split and use the uh, the Kenwood uh, 590 as a second uh, receiver. Now, the Kenwood does have, um, that is the 890, does have a, a second VFO, but it's not in operation at the same time as the first VFO. Uh, and therefore, um, although you can set a second um, frequency on VFOB, it doesn't actually receive anything until you press the button and move that into operation. So the idea of ha of adding the uh, the TS five ninety is to make that second VFO live all the time. Um, right. So let's have a look and see how we prepare the, the radios to be slaves to each other, if that's the correct way of putting it, or at least the 590 to be a slave of the 890, and uh, see what cables we need and how to uh, to set it all up. Right, let's uh, go to the um, to the computer. Let's call up um, the 590s and the 890s uh, manuals and see what settings we need to do in the menus to make these two radios communicate with each other. So one of the first settings we need to do to enable um, the Kenwood to be used as a slave to the 890 uh, is to set a few things in, up in the menu. So let's enter the menu um, and let's swing it round to the first one we need to go to is 67, I believe. Could be 68, no, 67, yep. Yeah. And what we need to do is set the COM port to 115200 as it is now um, and make sure that that is the same as what's on the 890 which we'll check in a minute but that's the fastest setting so that's what we'll set it to we need to go down one uh, and we need to turn on which this one is um, tx inhibit uh, the idea behind this is that you can't accidentally transmit on this radio, the, the 590, whilst it's connected to the aerial system on the 890. Next one we need to do is on 65, I think it is, yeah, 65. We need to turn on um, the digital, uh, what's it say? It actually tells you what it's called. I think it's copy, here we go, yeah, copy, uh, SPL, that's split frequency to the VFO. So this one obviously needs to receive the um, the split frequency from the master and vice versa. The master needs to receive the split frequency from this one. So we'll, we'll turn that on. Um, there we go, that's turned on. And the next setting is on 64, which is to actually enable this to be used as um, as the sub receiver, which is what we need to do. We need to turn that on uh, and we have a couple of choices in here. The off and then it says this is um, set as band A transmit receive. Sub receiver, band A sub receiver. That's all it is, just a receiver. Or we have B-band, which um, allows this to transfer data to the um, 890 and receive data from the 890 on both bands A and B. Not quite sure why it has just B, but that's the way it works. So when it's not in split mode, it will transfer this um, VFO's frequency to the main VFO frequency on the 890. Um, and vice versa. When it's not in split mode, you can send the B band frequency from the 890 to this um, receiver. Um, yeah, it all gets a bit complicated. You'll understand a little bit better, hopefully, a bit later on. What we need to set it to um, is sub A, receive only. Okay, we don't need to transmit, so it's just receive. Um, and what else do we need to do? I think that's it, actually. Yep, that's it. So we come out of that menu, turn the radio off. Next thing we need to do, 
to do exactly the same on the 890. So on the 890 screen now, press the menu button, go into menu, and everything happens within um, submenu 7, which is the rear connectors. So we'll go down to submenu 7 and press select. And here we have to make sure that our board rate is exactly the same as it is on the 590, in which case it is 115200. Uh, bits per second. Uh, we then have to go down to our data transfer and because we want this radio to be the master it is set to A TX RX. Um, that's the data the transfer, uh, the information that will be transferred to the sub transceiver and the location that it needs to write to um, is this one the VFO and vice versa. So if the information from the um, from the 590 gets transferred to the VFO setting on the Kenwood 890. OK, so those are the three bits and pieces that we do need to um, set on this particular transceiver. Obviously, we do not want to turn off the, the transmit um, on this one because this is our main transmitter. Uh, so that's it. And then after we do that, we come out of the menu and we have to turn this receiver off as well. OK, but that is not it. We have to do some connections now. Let me go back to the um, to the computer to show you the connections that we need to set up. OK, look, I'm, I'm actually taking a, a video, if you like, using the camera to capture the screen on my computer because I think or thought this might be easier uh, to do than um, actually to do a screen capture. Uh, why? I don't know. Mainly because I want to point at things on the screen. So please bear with me. Right. This is a um, an RS-232 cross cable or null cable, if you wish. Um, and we need to purchase one of those because um, that connects to the back of both transceivers, to the back of the 890 and to the back of the 590. Um, and there's only one port it can go into, so you really can't get that wrong. But you need to buy a um, a null uh, 232 crossover cable, OK, female to female, and connect that up. The second thing uh, you need to buy is a lead to go between, uh, and this is an antenna lead, to go between the... Um, the antenna out, this one, and the antenna in on this one. Now you can use either the, um, the RX antenna on the 590, or what I've done is I've actually used antenna number one, um, the input, the standard SO239 PO259 connector. Um, on the back of the uh, 590. So the back on the 590 has got an SO239 and I have purchased uh, a cable, uh, this cable here, which is a RCA2, a SO, sorry, a PL259. So an RCA to PL259. So the RCA side goes into the back of the Kenwood 890 and obviously the PL259 can either go into the antenna port 1 or antenna port 2 on the 590. So on the front of the Kenwood 890 you have an RX button here. This is a receive antenna button but if you press it and keep it pressed um, for about two or three seconds it switches the input um, of the um, antenna that's coming in either antenna one or antenna two port through the receiver and out of the RCA socket on the back. So you have a, um, a, a continuous flow of, of RF coming into the radio and back out again through the output and that will go to the input of the 590. Now the benefit here is that both receivers are on the same antenna um, at the same time. Uh, so when you transmit from the main antenna here, it cuts the antenna feed to the second 
radio and therefore it won't overload it and blow its front end. Really clever. Anyway, so that's how that's set up. Uh, and the other benefit is now, or benefit, the other thing we can do now is you don't need to do any more, really. Um, you don't actually have to go into the menu of this and set all of that up. And you don't have to go into the menu of this and set all of that up because really they will act as two independent transceivers now. If this one has the transmitter, that is this one has the transmitter disabled, it can be literally a second receiver, which is all you really want. Um, independent. OK, but anyway, let's turn all of this on. You've got to turn the sub receiver on the main uh, transceiver on um, after you've done all of those uh, changes. And now you'll see um, that if we look at the band that we're on, uh, we have the main transceiver on 7152, uh, the B band on 7152, and our sub receiver on 717999. This just happens to be there. So let's see what happens when I turn the main one on and we'll put it onto split. I hope this is all in frame. May not be. It's difficult to do. Right. Let's see. Okay, after a little bit of fiddling around, um, and if I get my camera in the right place, hopefully we'll see both these screens at the same time. Just stick that anywhere and we'll stuff this one anywhere there you go we're on a signal there let's turn the volume up okay so we can see that our left hand screen or, or the 890 is on 7124 let's make that a bit more sensible 7124 and if i press the transmit button here which will be this one The other radio transfers to that frequency. Okay, now if we go into split mode, we can now go off frequency ever so slightly on the other one. And our first transceiver stays on frequency, and we can transfer that back to the B. as a split frequency and when we transmit this one will automatically um, fade out it will cut um, we'll, we'll show you that now actually and um, we we'll come off of that for the moment just turn this on Hello, test one, two, three, one, two, three, test, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, test, 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 mic zero, mic zero, November, just testing. By the way, I was transmitting on a frequency where there was nobody. So the receiver isn't going to be interfering with that. Okay, good, Nick. Just a quick demonstration of the uh, the pass through. So this is the button here, and uh, if I click and hold it. I'll cut off the RF pass through, and this is what happens. So that's it. That concludes really the video of setting up.
the uh, the Kenwoods to work with each other. I, I'm a little bit disappointed that they don't do any tracking uh, of each other's frequency. And the only way you can send the information is by pressing the little memory in uh, button so that they both synchronize. It's a shame that you, you haven't got um, continual synchronization uh, between the two radios when, when you set them up and connect them so that if you turn one VFO, the other one would automatically uh, adjust. That would be nice. Um, uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, uh, I guess, if you want that kind of level of, of complexity, um, perhaps you need to buy a 990 or a different radio. Who knows? Anyway, I'm happy with the way it works, um, apart from that syncrasy thing. And... Uh, it does what I need it to do. Personally, I very rarely turn the split bit on. I just normally dial the the secondary receiver into the um, into the frequency I'm, I'm trying to listen to, and leave the uh, the, the eight ninety on the transmit frequency. Um, that way, I can hear both um, the transmit frequency as well as the receive frequency. Yeah, um, I think you know what I mean. So there's, there's no, there's no issues. And when I transmit, um, of course, the, the output on the back of the 890 gets turned off, which means that the, the front end on the 590 is well and truly protected. Uh, and that I've got no issues with that at all. Uh, and of course, the, the other side of the coin is that because I've got dual antenna inputs on both radios, if I want to play, um, different antennas, different frequencies, different bands, um, I can just go to uh, antenna B on both or even antenna B on the 590, leave the 890 antenna A. Um, that carries on with its life being happy and I can flick up and down the bands, different bands even, um, and listen on the, the 590. I've still left the inhibit transmit um, enabled on the 590 because I don't want to make the mistake of thinking that I've you know, disabled it or enabled it and then transmit and then destroy my uh, my 890. That ain't going to happen. So it is purely being used as a receiver. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope uh, that's helped you in some ways. I mean, I've really tipped the, um, the, you know, the top of the iceberg with that. And, and I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of information there that even I've got wrong, that even I've got on. Um, there's a lot of information there that I've got wrong. Um, and if I have please put it in the comments below. Like I said, um, you know, I'm learning this as we go uh, and I'm just sharing that knowledge with you. Thanks so much for watching um, M0 MSN. Bye-bye for now.